Hey guys, Great Unclean One here with a quick message before we start tonight's episode. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties towards the end of our recording tonight. We were uh, about 30 minutes away from finishing our session and my internet went out and uh, had no idea what the hell was going on, so I ran downstairs to check out the router and to find that my wife's rabbit had chewed through the ethernet cable, completely severing one of the wires. So I had no internet whatsoever uh, with my PC that I record everything on, so we had to call the episode there. So towards the end, you will uh, eventually hear that I just stopped talking completely, uh, the rest of the gang is a little confused. Uh, they did a little bit of role play uh, while I was checking to see if I could get things going again, but um, unfortunately I was not. So uh, things cut out pretty quick after that, but that's all right. We got most of the episode recorded anyway, and uh, it was mostly just a lot of role play. Nothing major happened. Uh, I mean, obviously, we didn't play after I got cut off, so that is where it ended. So sorry for the abrupt stop at the end of this. It's a little bit shorter than usual, but, uh, you know, we'll be back next week, and we will have more alien action for you. So thanks so much for everything, and we will catch you next time. Dragon's Greed Gaming. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, little players, for joining us as well tonight. We're back. We're back for some more Alien, and uh, we're diving back in to session two of our Heart of Darkness campaign. Uh, but before we do that, as always, be sure you stop by the Facebook, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube. All that good stuff. Give us those likes, give us those subscribes and follows, comment, help us grow the channel, help us praise the algorithm, and get our awesome stuff out to more people, because that's that's what we like to do around here. So, um, as always, uh, what else? Oh, and if you want to help support the channel even more, consider tossing a few coins into the Dragon's Horde over on our Patreon. We've got uh, weekly early access to all of our episodes. We've got artwork from Kyle over here and uh, every month. And we've got a exclusive actual play series called The Drowned Dragon currently going on. It's a Warhammer Fantasy game, and it's fucking legit. And I think we play that in two weeks, so that'll be good, too. Very exciting. Anyway... I am your host, the Great Unclean One, as you can see by my fancy little nameplate here. I am Mother tonight, your GM, and I will continue to lead our crew through the horrors of Alien. And speaking of crew, let's go around the table here. We'll start off to my... my right on the screen. Sean, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I'm Sean. Yeah, that's and me. I, and I'm muted. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was muted. Yeah, so uh, took a little bit to unmute there for a second. Uh, I'm gonna be playing Professor Berger Hedenstrom, PhD, three HP and four stress already. So we're off to a great start. Yeah, we got hit hard by the stress last week. You guys have been on the station for like 25 minutes. <laughs> Not a long time, but. Uh, that's what his life's about, you know? It's not here for a long time, just a good time. Wonderful. Uh, we got a little bit of extra time tonight, because we're actually not spending two hours getting this set up, so anything you want to tell the listeners before uh, you get to pick a new character? Uh, you know, I, I won my first game of Old World today. Thank you, Travis, for your valiant sacrifice. So How many how many games have you played? Two? Two. <laughs> Okay. okay. So, so you make it sound like it's been so played. hard. Yeah. My first game I've <laughs> Hundreds won. Hundreds of games <laughs> I've struggled and never won. Uh, but I mostly owe that to Travis's poor dice rolling. He did get to use a fire belly and the flame template today, so that was cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Found out how that works. 
I heard cool. your your tomb guard smacked uh, smacked some heads. They did good work, but uh, since none of his guys are man sized, I couldn't get any killing blows on him. So, yeah. uh, but you know they're still like strength toughness four, and they were weapon skill five at one point, so pretty solid. Cool, wonderful, excellent. Well, we're happy to have you back. Uh, even this is probably going to be your last session, but you know that's, that's how it goes in this game. So. Yeah. Don't laugh, yeah. Kyle. You're, we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> You're next, old man. <laughs> oh, old man. Oh, no. Uh, off to the far right, Gar has joined us all the way from the Neon Swamp in Texas. Welcome back, fellow podcaster. Fellow kids, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm going to be playing Sergeant Nora Sajad tonight, um, and she's... Uh, She's trying to keep people alive um, best she can uh, in a weird situation with a lot of unknowns. She's a little on edge right now, you know? Her job's in jeopardy, so. And what's your stress and, and health looking at so far? We'll do that for everybody. Give, give the yeah, so, an, uh, listeners an update here. You know, she's she's keeping it together. She's only got two stress, and she hasn't t- taken a lick of damage yet for health. That's good. That's good. Did you take any rad damage from the radiation? Mm-mm. Wow. Damn. I've got one rad point, though, but I haven't taken rad... Well, yeah, so one rad point, okay. but I haven't taken damage from the rad yet. Gotcha. Okay. Understood. Great. Okay. Well, that's that's great. Anything you want to share with the listeners and the viewers? Uh, nothing. No, I mean, well, yeah, just uh, we're, we're, I've been taking a deep dive into the wild, wild west again, um, watching a little bit of Deadwood to preparation for our game this coming Friday because it picks up right where it left, left, left off about a year ago, and that was in Deadwood. So my players might get to see some characters from the popular show like Al Swearingen, which should be funny. Uh, it's going to be hard to say the F word constantly um and not seem silly but um yeah it should be a good time wonderful well we're glad to have you back and we thank you for your service (laughs) moving along below me the man with that magnificent beard the frog himself has returned how are you sir hello i'm doing well yeah today i'll be playing uh captain aloysia luger the third and um yeah stats wise she's doing pretty well health just fine stress is at actually at zero thanks to the brilliant counsel of our uh dr uh, lark and i still panicked eight though so that's not great uh, until unless things chill out real quick um but yeah I it's just, been good i just realized i had misspelled captain on your nameplate and I feel like an idiot. Captain. El Capitan. Uh, it's fixed now, so okay. <laughs> good. It's great. Good. 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 That okay. Works. Anything else? Oh, yeah. what, what have you been up to? Anything you want to share with the with the group? Well, I don't mean to date the podcast, but we had a early thank or uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration. I made a shepherd's pie and a bunch of uh, fried cabbage and bacon. Cabbage was okay, oh. as it often is, but shepherd's pie <laughs> was really slick. And I have a lot of uh, Guinness lager. I get to work through the rest of the weekend. That'll that'll help you get through tonight, I'm sure. After after the horrors that Captain uh, Luger had to go through last week, she got hit pretty hard with some mm-hmm. shocking revelations, which we'll get to in a moment. Awesome. Cool. Wonderful. Uh, Next to the Magnificent One is the Red One, Kyle, the Redbeard. Hello. Hello, it's me, Kyle. I will be playing Professor Hector Navarre, PhD. Um, He's kind of the tank of the group, so he's sitting at two out of three health. Oh, okay, yeah. (laughs) And and, uh, at three stress, so he's, he's not doing too hot right now. He's currently... Uh, watching uh, Drabowski, I think, and the other Dra- doctor that's... Drabikowski. Drabikowski. And uh, is uh, watching her because she's all sorts of fucked up. And, uh, she's not doing great. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So they're sitting pretty by the uh, the ladder hatch. And yeah, as for me, I'm stealing myself to go down and pick up my dad in the Florida Keys and drive him back up north to Illinois. 
Uh, this is happening during spring break, so you can imagine what the Florida Keys would be like during spring break. I can't because I've never been there, but uh, I pretend that I can. College kids everywhere. Mm. Not great. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. No. No. Okay. So I'm going to act like Nosferatu and stay inside during the sunlight hours. That's how I live my life, and it's worked out pretty well so far for the most yeah, that's, part. That's that's so. every day, man. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> All right, and last but not least, also joining us from the Lone Star State, the War Boss, Eric. Hello. Uh, so Doctor Lark, you know, not quite as tanky, but you know, sitting at five of five health, uh, with no stress. Uh, Androids OP. Please nerf. So, you know, I, I think I'm doing okay. You know, we'll, we'll see once the aliens start, you know, biting, but... What makes you think there's going to be alien life forms in this game or scenario? There, there's there's this... some uh, there's some weird, creepy things coming out of the closet, so... Yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, okay. I'll be, it'll be fine. Oh, that's right. I forgot where we ended. Yeah, I guess the, the yeah, cat's out, the out of the bag. Big cat's big out of the bag. There. <laughs> there's, there's creatures on this space station. Oh, fuck. Um, but... People. I you guess uh, for that me, I'm, I'm excited to take the world leaders down to uh, Adepticon finally. Yes, next get, week. get some Horus Heresy, uh, doing the Phyrex events. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. What uh, what days are those on, and what times? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, so I am doing I'm doing gaming on Friday Saturday I think. Um, and I think they end at four. I'm doing gaming on Friday, Saturday. That's how he describes what he's doing at a convention, folks. Thank you for the spe yes, yes. Specific specificity. So, so, Is that so the right word? Thursday, Thursday and Sunday, I'm taking classes. Friday, okay. Saturday, I'm doing the heresy events. Gotcha. Okay. So. I hope Duncan Rhodes is there. I want to meet him. He was there a couple years ago, and I, I didn't get a chance to cross paths. So I'm taking the, the classes on Sunday from Lil Legends. Miles Davis, um, he's yeah, a he, he's pretty um, popular in the Heresy crowd. Okay, cool. So cool. I'm pretty psyched about that. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing you. That's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be good times. So Definitely. it's been a uh, been a few years. It has, man. Yeah, for sure. Get the old gang back together. So it's gonna be good times, man. So uh, I'm your host, the Great Unclean One. I am your game mother tonight. I will be controlling all the other cool stuff that's going on here. And uh, man, this scenario has a lot of shit going on. If you've run Destroyer of the Worlds, double that. Because there are so many side things and weird shit going on. It's a little overwhelming, but I did a lot of prep this week. I'm feeling good. I got good notes, so I'm pretty excited. Um, I've been doing a lot of house hunting this last week. Had showings almost every day, so I've kind of worn out by that but i think we might have found a place tonight so or today i should say pretty stoked about that um and what else uh getting some last minute painting finished uh for depticon got the uh another alien model done just got to paint some xenomorphs we're finished and uh yeah looking forward to uh to next week and uh, i've been playing some dbd new chapter for dead by daylight drop know if you saw that kyle the new survivor and killer and of course, as usual, the Dead by Daylight community proves to be one of the most toxic, horrible places on Earth. Um, yeah. So don't yeah. go there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a normal in my, it's normal in my country to be racist. That's a thing a person said. That's a thing they said, and they thought that was okay to say. And most of the other people were like, what is wrong with you, you horrible monster? Um, yeah, but um, yeah, so that's going on. Dead by Daylight, still fun, still cool, uh, but don't go to the Facebook page place so anywho uh scar just lost audio well that uh that, don't want to tell you kid can you hear us shake your head yes no Could can you hear us text the speech he turned like ghost white briefly he did over. he like ascended yeah Ooh. i was worried what was going on on that side i don't like that can someone message him? Because if I okay, you can hear us, Muscar. We I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Oh wait, there it is. Harry, you can hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, um, 
Oh, the cat's being dragged away, probably for dinner. Bye, cat. Okay, I'll be back, I'm sure. Anywho, uh, so let us begin. Let me get my notes here. So, alas, we left. You guys uh, have been assigned as a scientific research expedition to a space station called Erebus, which is near the Absalon Black Hole in the 26 Draconis system on the far north side of the uh, the Middle Heavens, whatever that is, spinward, coreward, I don't know, whatever, whatever the destination is, but you're far out. You're like 14 so parsecs out on this bitch, uh, way far away from everything. And... Uh, You've, you're all basically a science team, with the exception of uh, the captain and um, the sergeant, and you've been sent here to study a new life form that they have discovered. They've apparently discovered on the accretion disk of this black hole, uh, which should not be possible. Things aren't supposed to live on accretion disks. Um, I don't know about you, but I actually did a little scientific research for prep on this, so I knew some of the shit I was talking about. And, uh, yeah, accretion disks, things don't live there. and uh, But apparently they do in Alien. So you have to, they've been discovered. You guys have been sent to investigate these life forms. Um, at the behest of Michael Bishop from Wayland yutani himself, uh, who left you a recording. Upon reaching the 26 Draconis system, you guys were greeted by the awesome, impressive sight of the Absalon Black Hole this crazy looking black red orange just mass out in space uh, we'll show it again because it's just so good it really is one of the best pieces of art uh it was intense to say the least uh seeing the the station in orbit near this black hole and as you guys neared the station your android co-pilot Gray and Captain Luger uh, realized that a lot of the station appeared to be down, perhaps not powered or, or with minimal power, not responding to hails. And as you set a course to one of the airlocks, the black hole's gravitational force shifted, yanking your ship, the Setarina, out of its trajectory and spiraling towards the black hole. Luckily, Captain Luger was able to keep you guys from a horrible, horrible fate and being crushed in the uh, the black hole. Uh, however, uh, she was not able to prevent you from crashing into Erebus Station, landing somewhere around Deck E, the, the residence deck, and um, it is uh, it is here uh, that our adventure began. Um, you guys exited the uh, the ship. Donned some of your spacesuits, divvied up some of the gear, and uh, began making your way onto the station. It was quickly evident that the residence area was heavily damaged and saturated with very high radiation. You guys were quick to get out of there, making your way up the central sta uh, shaft of the station, uh, up to B deck where the operations center is. On your way there, though, you discovered something peculiar. In one of the central shaft areas between the airlocks, you discovered a part of the station that appeared to be different. Weird, pipey, biomechanical artery or cabling was kind of just coming out of the walls if it was part of the wall itself. Uh, I believe it was Sean's character who tried to get a little bit of sample, but really couldn't scratch this thing. It, it looked bio-organic, but it, it was mechanical upon touch and, and investigation. Very, very bizarre. You also went through another area where there were these strange nodes that were kind of pulsating as you made your way through. And um, Sergeant, uh, you were able to get the group through mostly without setting off some of these, but unfortunately uh, at least one or two of them went off. You guys got covered in weird spores, uh, but you guys were in your suits, so you seemed to be okay. You then got to B-Deck, where the operations center was, and it was here you could see through a massive viewport 
staring out in, at the black hole. Uh, Professor Hedenstrom, you discovered a huge crack, uh, like a like a star shaped crack with uh, like I think it was like eight eight like hairline fractures, but huge, like bigger than you, uh, on the glass. And before anybody could really answer you when you were like, "What the fuck is this? Did you guys see this?" Um, everybody could see that Captain Luger kind of went white as she had been investigating some of the uh, terminals. And Captain Luger, you discovered that uh, here in um, operations, you can kind of keep track and control a lot of the major functions of the station, including having access to the various um, uh, uh, like data tags that... Uh, the system has from PDT signals for all of the station staff and crew and prisoners. Um, you, you saw a bunch of different groupings of these. However, there was a strange group of eight uh, that were labeled W.Y. Cronus, all one word, uh, who don't appear to be part of the station's records in any way. Even more peculiar, one of them was named A. Luger. Uh, uh, some of the others saw this and asked what the hell was going on if you had been here before, but you know that's not how this works because your PDT is also on here as a Luger, so there's two of them. And this one that you saw was on this very deck nearby in the rec room. And after you guys discussed this for a bit, a strange biomechanical looking creature very tall, very lithe, very feminine in appearance with, you know, big hips. Uh, I should say wider hips than a male. Uh, breasts, obviously it was a female or is a female. It's hard to tell what this thing is. Uh, appeared almost floating. It seems like it's floating. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just very gracefully moving. Um, something's wrong. Something's in your head when this thing appears. And... That is where we ended last session as this thing... Oh, and the last thing I should point out, Captain Luger, and for everyone else. Um, Captain Luger, you recognized on this creature a tattoo that looks awfully similar to that of your missing great aunt. And that is where we shall begin tonight. So... Three of you are in the room with the holo tab. Looks like um, looks like my shit's not working here for some reason. No. Oh, it's because it's paused. That's why. Uh, yeah, it's um, you're not sure what to make of this, but Sergeant, Captain, and Doctor Lark, you're all here as this thing enters the room. And eventually, I think everybody else except maybe Hedenstrom, who's still by the, the glass viewport, uh, can probably see through this door right here. Um, Chris, I can't see anything. Like, my screen is not... It's saying I cannot switch scenes until resources finish loading for my current view. My screen's also black. Uh, well, that's not right. How about this? Does that help? Nope. It says game paused, and I'm just, like, stuck on a black screen with... Game is not paused. I just unpaused it. So I had to re... I reloaded it, because it, when you unpaused, it stayed paused for me, and now it's unpaused, so I'm a little concerned. Okay, just reloaded, I guess. How about everybody else? Everybody else good? Yeah, it looks okay for, for me. Yeah, no, mine's good. Yeah, I, I reloaded, and it's still black, and I can't see anything. Oh, I'm in here. And check room. That definitely sounds like a you problem. Cool. Well, I we're both having the same problem. <laughs> okay, so it's an us problem. <laughs> uh, great. Well, you guys keep going. I will start Googling. Can, can the rest of you see my pings? Yeah. Okay, can you guys move your tokens? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I, uh, uh, Sean, I swapped browsers. I normally use Firefox. I swapped to Chrome, and it's working. I've never used anything but Chrome with this, so I don't know. I was on Chrome and it was doing that, so I switched to Firefox, but I'll try Chrome again now that it's refreshed. Have you tried deleting cookies? Yes. <laughs> I tried to <laughs> it off and on. 
I, I mean, it's, yes, I, I've tried <clears throat> logging out, all of that, so I'll just keep Googling. Okay. Uh, so once again, this is the creature that you guys see. And you know what I just realized? I do not have the dice roller up on the camera. Uh, However, that's in an empty space and it shouldn't be a big deal. I just need to open another tab. Sorry, folks. Still learning this whole OBS foundry thing. I believe in you, buddy. And we're having far less technical difficulties than we did last time. I will get that going. So, yeah, this thing kind of floats into the room almost if it, it like you're not sure if it actually is or if that's just your your head playing games with you um but uh that is that is what you see and yeah what would everyone like to do well i guess i might as well uh try my crazy idea which is um my signature item is a family heirloom which is a maintenance jack that once belonged to my great aunt. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take the big jack and sort of like keeping as much distance away as possible, sort of a long arm, kind of try to hand it over and and see if there's any reaction from this okay. creature. Also, just ignore all those secret rolls that you see on your screen there. Don't worry about those. Nothing, nothing to worry about there. Um, you have the jack and you guys have noticed as as this thing is moving towards you it appears very curious it's looking around the room as if it's almost confused or if it doesn't recognize some of the things you see it kind of reach out its hand against the wall as it as it goes by and then it stops and it's looking at you all and it's particularly it's staring at captain luger Again, it's not threatening in a threatening manner. It's not moving towards you in a hostile manner. It's very almost cautious. Um, and can you see us now, Sean? Yes. All right, good. Okay. I can see your little cursor moving around there. Uh, Sajad kind of says <laughs> under a breath, uh, shit, it's the, the real? And she kind of snaps herself out of it and um, kind of casually raises up her gun and yells at the thing to identify itself. Who are you? Identify yourself. Where is everybody? So at this point, everybody else who's not in this room would hear this. Uh, Ajiri and Drabikowski would probably come rushing into the room. Uh, what about Navar and Hedenstrom? Oh, yeah, Nav Navar would be right behind uh, the, the two of them. Okay. If you guys did not already everybody should take a point of stress when they see this i think the people in the room already did last week uh oh, but if, i can't i can't recall so um, i feel like two is too low i feel like i should have three i feel like four is pretty high so maybe i added it i'm gonna yeah, give myself one that, yeah it's again it's not a big deal but anyway it's 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 shocking it's 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 weird and uh before you 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 threaten it, uh, Sergeant um, Captain Luger takes out this maintenance jack, and the thing stops and tilts its head, and it's looking very curiously at the jack, and it over even like kind of leans in a little bit. It's still about like maybe six eight feet away. It's kind of stopped, but it takes like one step forward. You can tell it's definitely looking at it, um, with with a look of curiosity and perhaps recognition bash its head in <laughs> um i i guess i'm gonna with the other hand kind of wave and say like hello Al aloysia it uh it like turns its gaze back to you and it raises its hand up and it tries to match as you're waving, like you're waving in a mirror almost, and it takes like another step forward, and you can see it like kind of, it reaches towards the the maintenance jack, and it like just gently with the tips of its fingers runs its fingers down the side of the jack, um, as if it perhaps recognizes it. 
the fuck? You all, do you know you, this thing? You all get this sense of familiarity, but it's like in your mind. It's not like a gut feeling. It's like something in your head. Um, even even you get this sensation, Doctor Lark. Okay. Suppose. Uh, I guess uh, in whispered breaths, I'm gonna try to really quickly like, well, uh, my my aunt was lost on the ship, uh, called this Cerberus. Is that right? Is that what, what you're talking about? I think it's in your description. It is. I. Wait, wait, in here, Cronus. There we go. <laughs> oh, which matches the the um, BD readings um and the tattoo matches but obviously she's human so i don't understand what's happening here i was like is this a person and i'll like continue kind of waving and uh yeah, for what seems like several long minutes, this thing is just studying you guys and looking around. Um, especially when Captain Luger has got the maintenance jack out or trying to interact with it, it seems very interested and, and curious. Um, does anybody do anything else, or do they kind of let this play out and see what happens? Sergeant Sajai, will, she'll kind of lower her shock gun, but take note of where the scientists are and make sure they don't get too close. Okay. And Hedenstrom observe it and sort of try to make out what he's actually seeing here. Are you asking to use your analysis talent? Uh, my breakthrough, yeah. Oh, breakthrough. What's that one do? You've done it. Once per game session, you automatically pass an observation roll of your choice without needing to make the roll. In order to avoid spoiling the scenario, the GM has final say on whether or not this talent can be used for this particular role. Um, I would say, well, what are you trying to observe, I guess? What kind of information are you trying to garner here? Is it human? Uh, sort of, like, what is going on with it? Does it, like, understand us? I don't think you need to make a roll based on what Captain Luger just said. I think I'll leave you to make your own deductions as okay. a man of science. Cool, cool, cool. Eventually, uh, the thing kind of stares at you one last time, Captain Luger, straight in the eyes. You get this sensation in your head. The, it's it's a familiar sensation it's uh but there's like a mixture of like like pain confusion love and hate all in one and then the thing turns and it uh it steps past sergeant sajad gets into this hallway and begins walking down the hallway uh in this direction very gracefully very steadily and, and it, like just and it's the same thing it's looking around like it's never seen anything like this place before so dad looks at the others kind of in a way of like we're following <laughs> this thing right yes <laughs> so you uh, follow it oh, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't even look back at you guys it doesn't make any attempt to stop you or prevent you or anything like that and eventually, you see it stops at the airlock, and it walks into the airlock. Okay. You then see the lights begin to flash, the door shuts, and the thing turns. It's facing you all, and you see the warning lights going off, these like red and amber hazard lights. You see the depressurization begins and the airlock pops open and this thing just ejects into space but where you're expecting an explosive decompression or eyeballs to explode or blood to spurt out it is All those things. one of the most peaceful 
and serene things you've ever seen. And there seems to be no ill effect of the vacuum of space on this thing in any way that you can determine or see. And it simply just floats away from you guys. And then it, it, it goes, I mean, space, so down. But it goes down in the direction of the lower decks. And eventually it's out of sight. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> I guess uh, Kluger's gonna run back to the operations and like look at where the PDT signals are. You can see the PDT signal is still active. It has not changed, like indicating. I don't think these actually have life readers on it. Um, I think we determined that last time. Uh, but you see that it is moving down the side, the side of the station, lower and lower. It's not just, like, floating out into space. It's moving down. Can I go what? to the room it came from? Mm hmm I was going to say, were there other uh, Krona signals kind of from this floor? No, this was the only one. It was the only okay. signal other than you guys. Um, and it uh, this is, like, a rec room, and uh, there's a couple bunks in here. They're bare. It looks like the sheets have been taken off. All that's there is the mattress and the frame. And uh, there's also a, uh, <laughs> a shout out to aliens here. A box of petrified glazed donuts sits open on the rec room table. Uh, there's also a coffee machine in here, which appears to still be functioning. Uh, and there's like one of those, um, what's the air hockey tables? One of those is in here. Maybe a cool pinball machine from the retro era. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, Navarro yeah. would double back and go into the rec room as well. Be curious to see where this thing came from. Can't tell. Must have just been chilling in here, but you don't see like anything that would indicate like it, you know, like there's no like nest or cocoon. It didn't seem to come out of a wall or anything like that. Mm hmm. Is this just a so like this this room is this just a delineation of like it's the same room there's just yeah. like a doorway yeah. exactly yeah like okay. that's more of like a like a lounge where like the coffee machine and like a little refrigerator and food would be and the okay. room you guys are in is like the actual like sofas TV you know the games all that stuff so what do you all do? So Jaws flipping through a book, not like frantically, but like she's got like this little handbook um, and she's trying to find like a page in it. OK. Are you trying to hide this book at all, Sajad? She hasn't really moved from where the airlock was um, and just kind of in awe with the air and looks back and forth from the airlock window and down at the books. Not really hiding it, no. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't look like anybody's really hanging out with you, so I guess they don't see what you might be reading. Uh, Ajiri and Drabikowski, uh, Ajiri looks pretty in shock. Uh, Drabikowski's kind of doing a better job of, like, holding her shit together, but you can tell she's, like, she's interested more than she's, like, stunned or, or shocked. Like, the scientist in her is definitely, like, like going. So, what is next? Uh, well, Loise is still looking at the uh, console. Um, definitely trying to explicitly take note of the location of any of the other, like, W.I. Cronus tagged. Okay. Signals. All right. Uh let me see. I think they are specifically labeled here. Uh, there is one coming from deck G. I believe terminal one. Yes, terminal one. Uh, there's also one on deck C in hydroponics. There's, um, 
There's there's a total of eight, but it doesn't specify where they are. So they're just they're around. But those are the most immediate ones. Jazz gonna run over to you, Javikowski. What is it, Sergeant? Uh wait. Look, look. She has a, a little book here. Look, right here, right here, where it says it's, it's, it's just like that thing. And she shows Dravikowski like a description of something with like biomechanical uh, uh, body parts and this penal colon, uh, this, yeah, this penal colonist referring to it as the dragon. Okay. Um, high or low? I. She looks over it. She says, I am familiar with the space beast. She says, uh, I can see similarity, yes. It it's uncanny. Sound, does not sound exactly the same. For one, that thing did not have tail. One in book does. Right. Right. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> Perhaps not, Sergeant. There's much out there we don't know. I would be keen to see it again and study it. You can see it for a moment. It looks like the fatigue and the stress and, you know, the pain from all the damage she's taken has kind of gone away. But you can tell um, she kind of like stumbles again, is like leaning heavily on the wall. And Najiri comes over to uh, to kind of kind of prop her up. And he's like, um, perhaps uh, maybe I should get uh, Drebikowski back to ship and then uh, get her patched up a bit. Yeah, should we set up the umbilical to this deck? That might make it easier to go you back. You know the umbilical's not going to reach this far up. Because oh, keep yeah. in mind, the ship is still crashed yeah, into the station. Um, <laughs> you can attach it to somewhere else. Uh, it's just not this high up. A couple other things, uh, Luger, since you are looking at the uh, the holo tab and you're kind of looking at the, the terminals here and stuff... Um, you notice on the whole tab in particular, you can see your ship, the set arena, sticking out of the central shaft. You can see that a fire has started and has spread down to the next deck below. And it seems to be slowly, slowly growing on uh, the port side of the station. Um, okay. What else? Also, uh, you discovered here, I just want to recap in case we forgot, you briefly when you looked through the operations and some of the, the data logs here, you saw there were a bunch of notes about the discovery of the Hesdalen lights, which are the, the life form they found in the black hole. Um, you also saw there was something about an object they found that was like kind of out near the black hole that they uh, they got out of like its orbit or like out of its gravitational uh, pull and they brought it onto the station. Uh, and it seems like after that, strange like accidents and power outages started shortly after that. Um, and... Uh, I mean, if there's other things you want to look for, you can, but those are the immediate things. I just want to make sure everybody recalls and... But I know there's an armory in the ops here. Yes. At this point, yes. Okay. Yeah, she's beelining it for there. Okay. Um, Can I check out security muster? Yeah, so that's like a security checkpoint where, like, the security guards would hang out. Um, that's also one of the places where if there was an emergency, this is one of the areas where people are supposed to come to to, like, meet up. They got, like, a computer or a comm terminal or something there? There are terminals throughout the station, yes. Um, when you guys get here, the armory itself has been stripped clean. There is not a single weapon or piece of ammunition left in here, Sergeant. You can tell someone has been in here and intentionally taken everything. 
uh, Chris, that thing uh, labeled damage control, is that like a bunch of computers or? That's the holo table. Oh, okay. Uh, so would would we know to to give that a shot for the for the fire situation? Uh, in what regards? I mean, you can see that the fire is spread slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like raging out of control. It's not going to consume the whole station, but it's, uh, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's definitely damaged part of the station. It's growing slowly. Are there any anti-fire systems available? Uh, it looks like some of them are going off, but it looks like it, uh, it's probably a little bit more severe than, ju- it's not just fire from, like, the crash itself. It is, um, let me actually see what it says here. So you actually take a closer look here, uh, Navar, and what you realize is you kind of zoom in, you know, on the little the little uh, 3D model thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can tell the part of the set arena, the crash has cracked the central hub of the station, and it started a plasma fire. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's Oof, bad. Now- <laughs> and you, you can probably run some simple calculations here and just have the system do something automated. If it's left unattended, it will probably consume the station, like, within, it's guessing, probably, like, 12 hours. It's a big station. It'll take a while. It's not, like, just, like, lighting a match to a, a thing of gasoline, but... Um, mm-hmm. It it is it has started to spread to the deck below where the set arena has crashed. Okay, and just for my edification, uh, plasma fires could not be put out by say venting. Exactly. They can. They can actually. They can. Okay. So I think Navar would um, turn to the captain and and say, uh, uh, "It seems like we'd have to vent." Don't you agree? Uh, I think so. Um, what's what's on the level there? Oh, let's see. Anything? What, what are our risks? <laughs> so it is deck F, which is basically the cell blocks. The correctional oh. facility. <laughs> Navar, Navar would... Uh... Which is like uh, straighten people. up and be like, "Well, that settles that then." <laughs> suck, suck. As you're looking at this, you guys can feel a slight rumble through the station, and you see warning lights flashing on the holo monitor, and you see that the fire uh, has spread also to decks uh, G and H. So it's the three decks below where you crashed. And you run a quick system diagnostics. It looks like it's fairly contained. It looks like basically it, it hit like an open vent, for lack of a better term, like a shaft that kind of sent it through. And it spread to those three. But it looks like it's contained, and it's probably not going to do that anymore. But you know that eventually, even if it's in like a sealed room, it's eventually just going to eat through the metal and probably get into other rooms and slowly, slowly spread. Um, and because it's a plasma fire, so it's way hotter and more dangerous than a typical fire. But it acts as fire in all other normal senses. It can be put out with water or, uh, you know, chemicals, venting, things like that. Um, but uh, it definitely feels like there's like a bit of a, a bit of a timer on your guys' stay here right now. Mother, do I uh, find anything in the armory? No, it's empty stripped clean all the gun racks are empty there's not even like a single like left like shell or bullet completely stripped what about like a hefty wrench not empty bare bones as they say just a moth flying around <laughs> um yep. Sajad, Sajad says no this we need weapons this isn't this isn't enough we have six pistols. It's not enough. Okay. Uh, 
Would um, so in terms of the plasma fire, would you say F is is the most uh, severe part? Um. Or like, sorry, which which would be the most severe location of the plasma fire? Severe in what sense? The fire like, itself. Yeah, like if if that area, if it were to be vented, it would it would um, help the most. Um. Or would we be able to tell? All that three of those decks have huge deck plans, or in our big parts of the station. Mm -hmm. um, deck F is the cell block. Deck G is the main concourse. That's where uh, basically the loading docks are, and two of the big terminals and airlocks where ships would normally dock. Mm -hmm. um, and then, what else is down there? So there's some emergency uh, cryo sleep chambers. Uh, there's also a, um, there's a big, big, massive chamber where rare elements that the station collects are stored in. Um, and then on deck H, the factory complex, that is where the trawling arms are of the station. So, um, mm -hmm. the station is kind of set up in the like the set arena in the sense that it's meant to capture plasma and energy. So it has these two massive arms that extend from the central uh, spire. And as the station is like moving, um, plasma and like raw energy is going through space, primarily from the black hole, and getting sucked into these big massive arms, just like the opening on your ship. And then mm -hmm. this whole deck, deck H, um, is where all this energy is stored, converted, and then sent down to other parts of the station. So it also acts as a way for the station to recharge parts of itself and also for areas um, to collect this energy to then be stored and eventually shipped off and sold. Yeah, I think um, uh, Navarre would... Uh keep his resolve and, and look to the captain and say uh, I, the only way to put this out right now is to vent we need to vent now this is gonna this is just gonna keep spreading oh you're muted oh yes uh, I guess do we have any manual ways of controlling a fire there'd be fire extinguishers on each deck you probably have equipment on your ship as well there's probably equipment elsewhere in the station I know we, we had a bunch of PDT readings on G. Yeah, there's a lot on uh, on H as well and F. They all have a lot of activity as well, so venting them could be dangerous. I mean, assuming you care about those people. Um, Whoever they may be. Yeah. think uh where's hydroponics let's see that's the big one well, you know what there's one I last thing was one. i forgot that you guys would have access to um so in addition to all the information about like the discovery of the hesdalen lights and you know there's information kind of explaining a little bit of like what they are and like some of the theories and things um, you know, there's more details if, if you want to go into any of that. But um, you do see there is a separate, like, stored log from the science officer clerk uh, who Bishop Wayland, or I'm sorry, Michael Bishop had uh, mentioned um, in his, his little recording to you guys. And I'll put it in chat for you. Uh, so you guys can read it. So it's dated September 12th, 2185. Uh, that is the current year. It is 2185 right now. Uh, at uh, 2202 hours, science officer clerk. Meteoric mass from Hess Dalen plasma field brought aboard. Heading to Terminal 1 to examine now. 
Do we know where Terminal 1 is? Terminal 1 is on Deck G, the main concourse. Mm. With the loading docks and everything? Yeah, at this point, I would say you guys probably have access to all the schematics uh, between being here in operations and Gray has probably helped out a bit from the ship. You guys, um, you guys, are, I think, can you guys freely access all the maps at this point? Are you able to move through them or no? Uh, are they listed at the top of your, your yeah. screen? Okay, they, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to move through mm -hmm. them. So yeah, you guys have access to all the deck plans at this point. It goes all the way from deck A at the very top to deck J at the very bottom. So then we may want to manually go fix that plasma stuff if we want to actually go and investigate the decks, right? Or if we just vent them, we can put on our spacesuits. Yeah, but then we have to contend with possibly <laughs> murdering people on board, which, to be clear, Navarre is totally okay with. Yeah, but listen, if it's for science and to protect <laughs> the Hastalen lights, uh, I think we could make that sacrifice. It's a sacrifice we're willing to make for them. Hey, you brought well, we along have... the hermit introvert scientist, so... <laughs> Well, I, I think we have the uh, Enviro suits here um, and should make an attempt at uh, fighting the fire rather than just venting the entire station and everything that we came here for into the vacuum of space. Um, so let's okay. I guess. head back down. Party pooper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I just really wanted to see what happens when you vent people into space. You know, a thousand at a time, just for science, but okay. Yeah, what Navarro would... The floor just, like, a little bit. <laughs> we can do a little bit of venting, right? Okay, we'll okay. let G be what it is, but we can, we can vent F. I guess... So, a couple things. Um, Ajiri, uh, once again, says he's going to help Drabakowski get back to the ship, um, since she's pretty banged up. And he'll see if he can help out Gray with anything. Uh, Gray uh, chimes in over the uh, the comms, and uh, he once again just kind of explains the situation with the ship and uh, some of the things that he's going to need for you guys to repair the ship and cut it free. Um, and uh, he also says, um, Captain, I was looking over those notes about the uh, these Hasdalen lights, and um, apparently they they kind of feed or or live off of radiation. As far as I can tell, here any any area that has heavy radi radiation, they those these life forms could actually be in it multiplying and growing might be it might be prudent to avoid any areas if you can and it might be prudent to try to get the ship out of this area considering we're sitting in a very high dosage of radiation right now well failing that we could try to connect the umbilical to uh, to somewhere so we don't have to go through the radiation to leave the ship. The ship should be fine for now, but um, eventually may cause issues. We'll be safe for a while, though. Well, that is very interesting. I don't know if it changes our game plan necessarily. I was hoping to avoid any radiation to begin with um, and dislodge the ship. But perhaps if we could get it done on a shorter timetable, uh, that would make us all happy, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Ajiri says, Captain, I'll bring Dravikowski back to the ship, and then I can help Gray get the uh, umbilical attached somewhere. At least that way, if you need to all come back to the ship, you don't have to go through that again. You can minimize exposure that way. All right, thank you very much. Do you need any assistance getting out there, or...? Well, where are you all going? Well, if 
think we should try to fight the fires and get things under control. Um, if we vent everybody, that's terrible for multiple reasons, but we'll Agreed. also need, need some help to try to dislodge the ship. And the the figure company out would not be happy on. if you vent their crew and prisoners. Believe me, you don't want to be on the bad end of the company. Certainly not. Well, let's not dawdle. We need to get get out, fight fires, scoot. <laughs> and I start like uh, grabbing Sergeant Sajad and, and like ushering folks towards the uh, the air, the umbilical, not umbilical, the central stem. Yes. Okay. Uh, so where are you guys going? You guys going all the way down to deck F where the fire has seemed to spread. It's really not spreading on deck E because a lot of deck E is open to space. That's where you guys crashed. So the fire is really not having any issues there. It's mostly spreading downwards from where the crash has happened. Uh, so yeah. is that where you guys go? Just deck F? I think so. Okay. Sure. Is everybody is everybody going to deck F? I guess. Uh, uh, Captain Sticking with the scientists. Nobody, nobody oh, wants to wander off so. on their own and see what else is on the station? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do, but nobody I wants, won't. Nobody wants I mean, to go we... out in the space and see where a lugger went. No. <laughs> um, and also, um, since you're still here, I would imagine you probably take one last look at the holo tab or the the PDT readers, and you do see that uh, Captain Luger. You see uh, a Luger W Cronus ends up on deck G, the main concourse appears to enter through an airlock what? and uh, enters into Terminal 1. Wow. Uh, terminal 1, which is a place we wanted to go, actually. So. Um, I think before they, they part ways, uh, um, Navarre would place a hand on uh, Ajiri and um, say uh keep an eye on her make sure she gets back safe radio in when you're on the ship of course you all be careful out there don't do anything stupid or heroic wouldn't dream of it and uh yeah so he he so you guys uh split off then now are you guys going to go back through deck E and get exposed to the radiation again, or are you going to try to circumnavigate somehow? They have to go through the radiation to get back on the ship. They're just going to tough it out and just rush it. Mm. But you guys could, in theory, uh, do a spacewalk. Uh, Chris seems super excited for that, so I say let's do a spacewalk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or go through the radiation. Um, well, I'm all about that, too. So... Radiation, health, spacewalk, stress. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like getting to see, a, you know, oh, the black yeah. hole out in all its glory. <laughs> probably the, the greatest thing you could ever do, right? So that's my vote, spacewalk. My 74-year-old uh, like ass is not going on a spacewalk. It's like okay, Mr. Then... Grimm and Twisted Metal. Yes, come to me. Uh... <laughs> Initially, not what I'm leaning towards, uh, although, um, mainly because, like, I'm making the, um, like, if there were radiation in the middle of a, the station, it would not be particularly less radioactive immediately outside that same space but perhaps not i guess one thing is if we are going into like a manned deck zone um getting further covered in creepy spores would also be something of a liability um and maybe those we would definitely avoid via spacewalk right oh yeah uh, i believe that was between decks C and B. I think it was the the last airlock you guys came through 
before the hallway that's or the the shaft area that separates those two decks. So that's pretty much right as you leave. Um, not right as you leave, but between B and C deck, if I recall. So, baseball's looking pretty good. Basically, there's airlocks pretty much on every deck, uh, so you can do this kind of thing and not just have to use the the central shaft necessarily. Uh, mm -hmm. But obviously, you have to do a spacewalk. Our like our boots magnetic, or do we have like a tether that keeps us close to the station so we don't just drift off? I believe there are tethers, but okay. uh, I know there's that's, not that's magnetic boots. For me. What? Oh yeah, remember she didn't take a suit. I don't. There wasn't enough suits for me. Remember, oh. Miss, I'm an android, and let's take everybody. <laughs> is so. there is there an extra suit? in here somewhere we can grab there are you guys someone saw there are two suits in each airlock they're not the high tech ones you guys have but there are suits in them okay enough for an android oh yeah they're they're nothing they're nothing human shaped me, yeah let me tell you which ones they <laughs> are i mean i don't be. need <laughs> he's a um, buffalo it is, android it is the like, is mark, there somewhere for you to plug in it's the mark 40 compression suit eric I mean, I'm immune to vacuum, anyways. I just, I just don't want to float away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Mark Forties have the the thrusters like your guys' suits have. You'll have to check the uh, check the gear. Okay, we'll just have to tether you to someone. Uh, Mark Thirty. Wait, where's the Mark Forty? Let me see, Mark Fifty. Yeah, Mark. Let's check the old rule book really quick. I would imagine it would all be in there, but let's just check really quick here and see if it's uh, Mark 50, Mark 35. And I don't think it's special to this scenario. It could just be a typo, too. Let's just double check. No. Yeah, not sure what a Mark 40 is. I don't see it in this or the core book. So uh, we'll just say, uh, we'll say Mark 35, that's closer to 40 than 50. Unfortunately, bulky combat pressure suit. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh no, I'm sorry. It'd be, because it is a compression suit, so it's the, it's the 50. Maybe they oh. meant to put 50 and they just put 40. Could be a typo. I wonder, let me just check in here and see if it says the same thing. Oh, it says Mark 40 in here, too. Weird. Okay. Yeah, take the Mark 50 if you want one. Okay. And uh, it does have a full air supply, which I think at this point we should roll air again. Everyone's been ch sitting around checking out this alien thing that blasted itself into space. Oh, boy. Dang it. So well, I, think, uh, I, thought, um, I thought Operations was uh, oxygenated. Yeah, well, so that's right. You guys, you guys took your suits and helmets off. Yeah. So I guess you don't have to make air rolls, um, yet. Yet. Saving them oh. up for our, our eventual spacewalk. The best word. So, are you guys going to do the spacewalk right here to avoid the pods, or the nodes, and then to avoid the radiation? I need Those to pods know freak the, me the, out. What is the plan here? Okay. Uh... There's a currently on deck B, um... If you guys are going to avoid the nodes, Jerry and Drabikowski will come with you, and then they're going to go through the radiation to get to the ship. So what I need to know is, you guys, are you avoiding both? Or just one? None? What's the plan? Here, if it helps, I can put little tokens on the map here. Uh, to look, look y'all. I used to be a Wayland yutani commando, okay? Spacewalk's a piece of cake. Don't worry about it. Easy. Okay, here you go. We'll put this right next to deck E. Look at that. It's the radiation deck. <laughs> and then uh, we got fires on F, G. Oh, these tokens were great. I'm glad I made these. And <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Um, what else did we have? Oh, spores. Hey, I don't have something for the spores. We'll put, we'll put a blip. Uh, it's between B and C, so it's here. Okay. So Jad is a professional, so 
I'd say let's kick it. Alright, let's space walk. It. Last, hand, last chance to complain about it. Okay, then. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was, I was checking to make sure, because someone asked about the uh, the tethers, and I know they they talk about some of that here. Let me see. Ooh. Yeah, we need any handholds and... Well, our, our suits have thrusters, so we don't necessarily need tethers, right? Mm, at least one of you has, like, a grappling thing, right? I'm not going out there no, without a space buddy. No, I lost the harpoon. Oh, rip. You didn't take any reloads? Did it have reloads? There were reloads back on the ship. <laughs> I mean, I took whatever it had. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you what. High or low? Low. Ooh. Nope. Ah, fuck. You're like, I don't need more than one shot. I won't miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, let's see. Let me check another one of these and see what it says about airlocks. Mm. Deck G. Let's see what that one says. Personal airlocks. This is the part where you guys talk and keep the viewers entertained while I look shit up. You mean you what? don't just uh, edit these dead air <laughs> moments out? I don't have time for that. No, only in the podcast. <laughs> not in the I'm not editing two episodes every week. That's too much. Uh, <laughs> That's a fair amount of dead air. Yeah. Uh, if look, if more of you people were on the Patreon, then I could hire someone to do that. But until then, this is as good as it's gonna get. Okay. So it's your fault. Uh, yeah, it's your, yeah, you're it's the one. Your, it's it on your the... fault. This show is terrible. Be it, put it on the consumer. That's that's what I've learned in America. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask how long has it been long enough for me to like chill out from my previous panic? Uh, yes, panic is done. Uh, everybody, if you had been damaged enough time has passed where you'd get a point of health back. Um, oh. Yeah, maybe we should rest. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and, okay, we're already getting health. Uh, I, I don't think your stress would go away, though, considering you just saw an alien blow itself out an airlock and half the station's on fire. I, I don't think your stress would go away. I feel like uh, unless unless you'd deal. like some counseling. Yeah. yeah hold Hold the Alexa Bliss doll, please. <laughs> sure. I think it. Yeah, I think it'll take a while for this seventy-four-year-old to calm down. Now you calm down. Okay, it doesn't say. No, tell me to calm down. Uh, <laughs> there are personal airlocks listed on various parts of uh, the station, but I'm not seeing any specifics about what those entail. Hmm. Um. So we're going to say no. There's no tethers. I feel like that's something they would point out if there were. Okay. Plus <laughs> it's it's a way it's a corporate Wayland Yutani prison station. I don't think they care about that kind of shit. You know? And you made a point of saying how all of the beds were stripped of sheets so that we couldn't tie a bunch of those <laughs> together as a tether either. That's actually in the thing. That wasn't that wasn't me. Oh. I mean, can't it. you That's just exactly... curl? Can't you just ride me like a cowboy? Buckaroo? I mean, yeah, cuz you guys all have thrusters so she can just hold take... on and, you know. Yeah, take me home. Just don't <laughs> don't uh don't lose your grip. Right. Andrew's got strong a grip, right? Everybody everybody give me your belts. We'll make this work. This is the future, all right? Our pants are suspended by lots of anti, latex, probably. Anti-grav cuff things that just keep my pants <laughs> up at all times. Everybody's in latex. Nice. <laughs> Everyone's wearing just a whole one-body spandex suit, just like oh, yeah. all, all 80s sci-fi films. You can see everything. <laughs> you guys are like teletubbies. Oh, stupid oh, sexy right. blanders. <laughs> Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> okay, Back. so I will need mobility tests. Oh no! This will be easy because you guys have the suits. 
Did we get like an extra dice or? That's what I'm checking what it is. Let me get my GM screen. Handy dandy GM screen. Um, I t- you know, I gotta, I gotta remember. You're not supposed to be rolling dice all the time in Alien, and this is probably one of those trivial things where there's nothing crazy going on that's gonna really distract you. Um, so yeah, I won't make you guys roll here. I don't think, uh, think you need to. Um, what am I checking? Though? I was checking something. Uh, what was we wear this? belts. Yeah, what the? Are there for an entire situation, like in the uh, you know twenty one hundreds or whatever? I'm saying, there... space buddy, grab your space buddy. All right, I don't remember what I was gonna look up. So fuck it. So <laughs> you guys, we'll edit that out in post. Dude, just <laughs> look. Fine. If you guys could see the amount of tabs just on the scenario journal entry that I have to look through. There's 27, okay? And each one of these has like five to ten things described. Rooms. I will say, if it's anything like any of the other alien stuff, I'm not a fan of how Free League organizes the GM side of things. This is... As far as the three go, it's not as complicated as the, the two main campaigns, but this is intense. So, anywho, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so you guys do your spacewalk. Sick. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, I do remember now. It, um, it had something to do with the black hole. Because I think now that you're I out hear about the black in hole. space, I think... I think there's something we have to do here. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was yeah, saying. We, 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 we got radiation outside. We got baited, boys. Yeah, j- baited and outsmarted. Sean, Sean's gonna get his, to, his wish here. Me. Yeah, Let's the accretion just... accretion disc just arcs out some kind of infernal energy. This solar flare <laughs> cooks us on the spot. Okay, is it nice and toasty for all the aliens to eat? This reminds me of uh, what, shit. What was that book? Uh, cold, cold, cold. What was that alien book? Cold. Old Forge. Fusion? Cold Forge. Yes, that that has a, a really intense, a, a couple really intense spacewalk. I haven't seen it, but um, I, I I know I haven't read it, but I know it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so you guys do this spacewalk. It's fairly uh, normal, traditional. However, there it is in all its glory, with no obstructions, the Absalon black hole lighting you guys up with this eerie red glow. It is soul-crushingly omnipotent and magnificent. Everybody gains a point of stress when you're out here. <laughs> just bitch. because it is it is intense. Oh, I called it. Kind of a dick move, but uh, I'm, I'm here for it. And oh dang, <laughs> this oh. this is this is where we get to the fun part. So, oh. um, there are that rules fun part. for the the madness that you can accumulate, the neurological uh, distortion disorder that. <laughs> Michael Bishop told you about uh, from the black hole and being out here seeing it with just you and your flimsy little compression suit and glass helmet protecting you uh, it's intense and you guys have been here now long enough you've had a view of the black hole for most of the time you've been here Um, so I need everyone with the exception of Dr. Lark because she's an android and she's immune to this sort of thing I need you to each roll a d6. And the more often you make these, you have to keep adding cumulative modifiers. So I need everyone to please mark off on their character sheet that they have made one of these or make a note or something. So right now it's just a d6. But every time you have to make one of these rolls, you're going to add plus one cumulatively. Always he's got a five. Hey, if you roll a five or less, 
no effect is taking place. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh. Okay. Everyone is okay so far. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And you know what? I think that's a great place to take our break as you guys have made your spacewalk. <laughs> no one's been vented into space. Uh... <laughs> Well, Not unintentionally. But right, right. We we went um, into space, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll we'll take our break here as you guys are going down to deck F. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so, because that's where fire yeah. is. Right? Okay, yeah, okay that's the correctional module. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'll put your tokens out here so everybody can um, control and um, you have a couple choices, and by a couple I mean. Tree? Let me just double check what's going on over here. Couple few. I got, I got a couple two tree. I gotta zoom in so much to see the fucking key on the map. How Chicago of you? Yeah. Couple couple two tree airlocks. Couple two tree airlocks there. It's weird. There's an emergency station with uh, EVA suits, but it's nowhere near either of the airlocks. Hmm. Corporate. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. Okay. If you guys go to deck F. You will see uh, on the left, there's a thing that says uh, corrections office. And on the right, <clears throat> let's bring you all over here because you're not doing it yourself. We <laughs> didn't have access to it. Yeah, we, yeah. we only have stack you, B and E. You guys told me you had them all when I asked. I thought you just meant the ones you'd shown us. You fucking lied to me. Now I got to give you big fat liars. Okay, so which ones do you need? We have. Yeah, no, which ones do you have? We have e, e, F, F. B and F, that's it? And e, e and F. Oh, you know what? I think they're actually color-coded on my screen here. Let me just... Ah, okay. Foundry does Another it again. Oh, uh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't even know I needed this in my life, but Foundry knew. I always know. I needed this. It's always, you know, it's always watching. <laughs> okay, you guys should start to have access to all of them now. Are they showing up? Yes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. There you go. Kaboom. Okay. So, deck F, you guys can see it, right? There's no blackness. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Look, I'm always looking at your thing, Sean, when I look this way. <laughs> looking at your screen. <laughs> what the fuck did I do? <laughs> Every time. All I see is a black screen. Okay. I'll just not say it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just use your imagination, bro. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> you'll see on the starboard side of the station is the corrections office. And on the port side of the station, where the fire is, is the inmate infirmary. You'll mm. see there are two airlocks on each of those. Those little half triangled filled in squares. Ah. Uh, and the thing that says decon, that's a decontamination like chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll put you guys on the map. And then you, when we get back, you can tell me which of those airlocks you would like to attempt to access. Okay. Sounds good. I guess Sweet. my first instinct would be this, this guy down here, but I guess All right. the closer ones. Okay, so listeners, viewers, we'll be back in a minute. Uh, grab some Dr. Pepper, and uh, we'll see you in a few. Sounds good. All righty. We'll be right back. You hear me? Speaking right. of trauma, do we want to uh, breach in on the infirmary side of the yeah. ship? Or... <laughs> well, that's where uh, the fire is, isn't it? So you want to like, yeah. try to find a, like, a fire extinguisher on the way? That was a good segue. We'll, we'll shelf Neon Dragon for now, and we'll come back to that another day. So <laughs> yeah. uh, we are back, listeners, uh, with, of course, Dr. Pepper. He's here with us. It's, it's still, it's the plastic bottle. I got six more of these to go through, so you're going to see this for a while. Um, that's okay. It's still delicious. Anywho, we return. I think we need new music. This, this song's getting a little... How about... Uh... Let's see what we got here. Oh, EVA Spacewalk. That sounds like a good one to put on right now. Story writes itself, bro. That's loud. There we go. 
if you listen, it's hard to hear because the song's kind of quiet. Um, but if you turn up the volume, you can like actually hear like space like breath noises like coming out of the suit. It's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, if you just listen very carefully. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, there you are. It's deathly quiet out in space. Uh, you've come down the central shaft, which is this right here. So you guys are basically like on the outside of that. Uh, so you can see the two airlocks from where you are. You know what they are because you've seen the schematics. Probably pull them up on your suit or something. Or maybe Gray is uh, telling you which way to go and giving you guys instructions. So what do we do? Where do you guys go? Well, I guess uh, my initial thought was to pop in here where, like, the decon chamber is. Just, like, maybe get a quick spritz, see if that helps mitigate any potential spore nonsense we drag into the ship. Uh, okay. That's it. That was my only thought. I guess I want to, that... yeah, ask Sajad what her, her opinion is. Well, that's where the fire is, the inmate side of the infirmary, right? Yeah, so if there is... Okay, so I'm not a scientist. She looks at the rest of you. But if there's a fire in there and we open an airlock and it depressurizes de it, will that, like, just send a fireball out? And that will instantly, like, just go away? And But cook anybody standing there, you know what I mean? Is this, this like, backdraft? Or... Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> um... <laughs> Great, when we're in the, the airlock, it should repressurize, and so it would just be like opening a door. Couldn't be any change in like wind or anything, so I don't think it would do that. Unless well, these airlocks are locked. Keep in mind the way the airlocks work is you open the outside door, you get in the airlock, that door closes, it repressurizes the chamber, and then the interior door opens. So both doors don't open at once, because otherwise you'd be venting shit into space. So. That would just since there's a fire there. Yeah, just suck the the oxygen would would suck out, right? Um, when it yeah, repressurizes, you, it, it would probably like oxygenate the room. You also you also keep in mind you can see it on the map here. There's doors that separate everything. So because this is a space station, these are like starship doors. They're not like huge bulkheads, but they're meant where if this is closed that's going to keep the room beyond it from getting the vacuum of space. Um, I mean, now you can, we can assume, because based in Aliens, you know, Ripley opens the fucking hangar door, even though there's people in there when they're fighting the Queen, right? So we can assume that there are overrides that you can manually do, and there's probably overrides you can set when you're up in operations uh, to override each of those. But normally the system, like, if for some reason you opened the interior airlock door while the outer one was opened, this door that leads further in is going to automatically make sure that it stays shut unless you do some sort of override to force it open. So, and again, you don't know precisely where the fire is in here. Um, so, that's probably only something you guys could breed while you're actively at ops. When yeah, you're down would, here, you just you have the schematics. I would say like this one or this one is safest because there's no fire on there, so we're not gonna get like instantly blasted. Let's do it. Yeah, what is this? Uh, five by five meters. It's not that long a jog. So yeah, I think. Do you guys want to maybe split up and go to two different airlocks? Ooh. <laughs> is that bait? Yeah. We're in the pipe. Five by That's five. Bait. Now let's That's go. Bait. <laughs> bait. You've seen that meme, right? With uh, what's his name? Tom Hardy. From, uh, Tom Man Hardy. Nick. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so to the starboard corrections office. And are we going to the decon chamber where we're pinging? Is that what's going on? I think, yeah, that's still a good idea. Wipe off any excess spores we might have accumulated okay. in our time here. All right. yeah, I'm not oh, did, the, did you like, not want to go into the uh, inmate infirmary, Captain? Or are we well, going we... on the corrections office? Uh, we can go into the corrections office uh, if we're sprinting over. That's it's a quick jaunt over if we are worried about jumping directly into an inferno. 
maybe that's Plasma practical. fire doesn't make me particularly happy. So. I mean, we've, we've got the protection suits on. Vacuum of space, fire. Maybe also, not an action movie. Fire. It'll be fine. Yeah, also, yes. uh, security armory is on that side. You gonna shoot the fire with bullets? Mm -hmm. oh, no, yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, That's true. Yeah. The sergeant. The sergeant was uh, uh, wondering about arms. So. Fair. That's a good point. Fair. That's a, that's a, that's 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 an excellent point. In fact, let's let's do that. <laughs> you got the sergeant's attention. Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, can move your yourselves over oh, there. Lord. You uh, Jesus, I easily float that. over. Oh, this isn't even the worst one. There's maps where it's even smaller, like in Destroyer Worlds. The fucking icons are, like, tiny. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you get into the airlock, and you get into the, uh, the decon unit. Um, let's see if there's anything special here. Make sure I'm on the right deck. Deck F, yep. Okay. So, um, Captain, what's the plan here? Are we just going to grab extinguishers and fight fire with the... Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I for you guys keep talking. I forgot to uh, forgot my notes here. Something I wanted to again. Too many things going on in the scenario at once. Okay. Yeah, surely there's some kind of um, way to fight the fire somewhere. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have. <laughs> Would there be some kind of sprinkler system or halon system? Something, you know. It's what's going yeah. on. Surely the members of staff were trained on OSHA on how to spray a fire effectively and safely. I don't. I don't think OSHA's made it this far into the future. <laughs> Damn, Probably they're barely here now. Is, is it OSHA, the Wayland Utani? Yeah, it's operational safety worse. hazard. We OSHA, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all all I know is we definitely need to get to that armory. Okay. okay. Um. <laughs> all right, so you guys are you guys are uh, entering. It's like okay. <laughs> I I hear what you're saying. I really do. It's just why oh, we already have crystals and we've seen just one weird thing, and it didn't even attack us when we followed it. But yeah, it's... my thought was okay, crash in, hit some fire with extinguishers as we can, try to like secure any people or figure out if anyone's there, uh, seal off the area and invent anything else that we can't do manually, if oh. that makes sense. Okay. So John looks at, at um, shoot, I forget your character's Heat name, Trump. Trump. Um Burger, if you, Heat if, you, if you highlight their token, it'll show their name. Ah, perfect. Okay. Um, the, the, you, I, okay. Um, she looks at the professor is like, don't worry. We're supposed to be here. Uh, what does that mean? We were sent here by, for a purpose, sure, but, okay. Whatever. We're just going to table that for now. Cryptic, but okay. <laughs> Uh, I just sent one of you a message on Discord. I won't say who. Anyway, you guys enter the decon chamber. It goes through the process, decontaminates you guys, clears you of uh, whatever may or may not be on your suits. Feels good. Feels <laughs> clean. Feels right. It takes about a turn. It's about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a long process, but it's thorough. Got to be, got to be thorough out in space. Ask about that. Um, should we should we do this without our suits on too, just to decontaminate any anything that might have got physically on us when we took our suits off? You can. It's up to I'm you. Going to. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Does anybody else? Uh, yeah, each time we get to a place where there's air, um, Sajad is, is swapping to her ape suit, too. Okay. All right. Or gravity, yeah. rather. I guess uh, gravity was gravity and air. Does anybody not decontaminate themselves and their suit? No, Navarro would follow uh, Hedenstrom's uh, uh, 
uh, example. Okay. Then, um, so you guys, uh, you guys do that. I'm just checking to see what else. Um, okay. Yeah, so everything looks good. The decon unit looks, uh, untouched, empty, clean. It eventually finishes. Seems to go through the process. Clears you guys to go through. And when you guys open the door to this next area, you are greeted by five figures. All of them are androids. Oh, oh God. Four of them appear to be a type of working Joe. Oh, nice. uh, the other one uh, is looks like more of a regular android, uh, but it has the Whalen Utani logo stamped on its forehead. I really like putting that logo everywhere. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Guns, armor. I'll show you this guy. Wow, that is that is really prominent. Yep. <laughs> Not like Just a small in case stamp. you ever forget, this is property of Wayland Utah. <laughs> right, right. You cannot <laughs> miss. <laughs> so, uh, so down. you see this, you see this android, and uh, you can tell he's completely bald shaven, clean shaven, um, but you recognize him as some model of android that that's typical. So you, you know unnamed but you know you, you recognize him uh the others have the typical blue smooth creepy uh Sikhsin working joe model of uh of skin mm -hmm. uh all of them are wearing what is very obvious prison guard uniform equipment they are armed with, uh, looks like they've got some sort of vest on, and you can see that they all have uh, uh, like a, a shock gun and a stun baton. Uh, two of them have their shock guns aimed. Two of them have their stun batons out, because they're about to get 21st century on you. <laughs> 31st century, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, the one in front, does he have anything extra on him? He has a strange looking weapon you guys may or may not recognize, uh, but it's different from the others. He's not aiming it at you guys, but he does have it at the ready. And when you guys, uh, when you guys enter, they clearly uh, are waiting for you. The one with the W on his head steps forward, the Weyland Yutani logo. He says, Please state your names and identities and purpose here on Erebus Station. This is Captain Loisia Luger III. I am here on a, a trawling mission and also to uh, put out a fire on this deck. And we should step to it if you don't want to be engulfed in flames. You can tell there's a brief recognition probably running through his system. Uh, you recognize it more in the other androids. You've you've probably seen and met these people before, uh, Captain Luger. And uh, you know that this android's nickname is Crash because he looks like a crash test dummy, especially with the logo on his head. He says, ah, Captain Luger, welcome back. Pleasure to see you. And your f friends? Uh, gesture wildly is, uh, uh, scientists, observation of the black hole. Uh, I think that's all we should get to for now. And I sort uh, of like, yes, see if I could I... scooch around the corner. Uh, they're blocking your path. There's no okay, way getting past these guys. They're all standing in the doorway. 
uh, and he says, ah, yes, uh, the expedition team to here sent to study the Hesdalen Lights. Uh, I'm afraid you've arrived at a interesting time here on the station, but um, your presence is noted, and uh, and you are welcome here. What do you mean by interesting time on the station? Perhaps that is best left for the warden to explain. If you uh, would just accompany me, you've come to the right place. He's uh, just down the hall in the bullpen. Okay. And they kind of step and spread apart to, like, let you guys pass. And Crash, like, goes down the hall, expecting you guys to kind of fall in behind him. Does everybody go? I have no reason to not trust these obviously perfectly or, fine do synthetics. You, do you guys want to start the first combat against five androids? Yeah. <laughs> Point blank with guns drawn <laughs> and shock batons. God. You just got stun batons. They don't have firearms. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm super uh, yeah. excited to see what that does to my three HP. Remember, yeah, Ben. Heck... Ben took on like four androids by himself. Remember? Yeah. Because I only killed a wound soldier. He only, got, he only got two critical wounds from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hector rips <laughs> off his chest and produces his pistol. Uh, rips <laughs> off his shirt. Uses his chest just his torso. Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, what they I, had... so I'm going to follow him, but as I do, I'm going to kind of see if I can look down any hallways or rooms that are open, see if I can observe anything, hear anything. Sure. sure. So you do see in this room here that's marked off as the galley, you do see and you guys can smell and hear the sounds and scents of cooking, and you see that there is a man in there, clearly a chef of some sort, who's working on some food. Uh, he's got the classic white chef's shirt on, the long-sleeved version. Uh, so not the short sleeve version like Gordon, but a long sleeve version. Uh, and he's got a black apron around his neck. He's got dark black hair, pretty regular, not too long, not too short. And then he's got a, a beard kind of like mine, it goes into the goatee, but it's a little bit more of like a chin strap beard. It's not, a, not as full on the face. Uh, he's a little bit darker skinned. Um, Captain Luger, you would recognize this is a man by the name of John Hobbs. He is uh, basically like the station cook. Uh, makes all the meals and things like that. Um, so you can see the galley, the kitchen that he's working in. And then as you guys come around the corner, the, the, horner, the corner, there are two detention cells, uh, like, uh, you know, isolation for prisoners. Uh, and then he leads you down the hall to the bullpen, where you eventually are introduced to the warden of the facility. Uh, and when you guys when you guys come down the hall, the androids they move apart, and they let you guys come through. And as they do, two of them are at the front of you guys, and two of them are behind you, as if they're escorting. Uh, you guys, and they keep you kind of pinned in between them. They don't touch you or anything, but the way that they walk, it's very clear that they are corralling you in this direction uh, so they bring you guys there you get into the bullpen um, uh, the androids just stand outside in the hall two on either side of uh, each door and then uh, you guys are, are brought inside and you then meet a man by the name of Douglas Sykes he is Stykes my apologies S-T-Y-K-E-S -E Stykes he is the warden of the uh, the facility. Uh, African American man, short, cropped, buzzed hair, uh, short goatee, very thick, big eyebrows, uh, and a couple furrows in his uh, in his forehead. Looks like he's probably in like his late forties, early fifties. Um, little bit of a, of a of a belly, but otherwise looks uh, capable. And I believe, yeah. Uh, so uh, Crash brings you guys into the office. He says, Warden, we have guests. The expedition team from Weyland yutani has actually made it here. And uh, he looks towards you and uh, he kind of motions for you guys to come on in and, and join him. 
Yep. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'll walk in and then quickly ask, uh, oh, Warden Sykes, are you aware of the fire situation on this level? Is that under control? For now it is. Got a lot of problems uh, on the station here. I got loose convicts all over the damn place. He says it's... Say so uh, you got a fucking creepy floating lady. What? What the hell are you talking about? What? Have you what? Seen no, one, no one's gonna weird, say the, the crazy alien woman that floated into space? Yeah, well, we, what we happened saw. in operations? There was no one there. Don't have enough crew left to be there. What Prisoners happened? Prisoners outnumber us a lot. You know that, Luger. Come on. Keep up. How did the prisoners overrun you? I've had all sorts of issues ever since they brought that damn thing on board. It's caused all sorts of problems. We had blackouts. We've had systems malfunctioning. Uh, and, uh, and people starting to lose their shit from the black hole. Don't know where Webb is. Uh, or, I'm sorry, not Webb. Um, don't know where Clerk is. Running around somewhere last I saw him. Got androids trying to round up what we've got left of these prisoners. They're all over the place. And that, uh, that fucking bitch Flo is, uh, is at the head of it all as usual. Flo. It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know. Okay. Uh, as this is going on, you guys hear a sound that you're not expecting. You hear the meow of a cat. A little black and white cat, mostly black with just a little bit of white on his chest, that looks something like that. Oh, Captain Luger, you know this is Adrian, the station's cat. And he comes in from wherever he was. You see he starts rubbing up against Crash's leg. And Crash actually kind of like bends down, you know, kind of squats down on his haunches, pets him. And uh, you see he pulls a bag of treats out of his pocket and begins to give some to the cat. I used to have a cat that looked just like that. His name is Bowie. <laughs> uh... Aww. Stikes uh, looks back to you, uh, Sergeant, when you say that's a lot to unpack, and he's like, all you need to know, Stikes, biggest troublemaker here. Uh, she, uh, she went batshit crazy when they sent her out to get that thing that they brought on board. She's never the same after that. And, uh, I'll make sure I'm giving you the right... You were talking about flow? Yeah, hold on. Is that it? Okay, I'm sorry. No, let me... She was not sent... This GM error, not... not I'm not trying to fool you guys. She was not sent out to get the thing. This happened way long ago. Um, it's like, yeah, ever since her shuttle got stuck in orbit uh, around the black hole, they brought her back. She went batshit crazy. She vented a huge chunk of the uh, section of the station. There was, um, uh, there was a bunch of, uh, fires, and she vented the whole thing. She killed 67 workers. Just without a care. Out the fucking window. So, I was, uh, the colonial marshal at the time, and she was the station manager. So, well, company did, did a report, an investigation. They discovered what happened plenty of people to testify and back it up and uh yeah ever since then i made sure that uh i keep an eye on her so once they turned this place into a station a prison i made sure she stayed here so was was it a result of of the effects of the anomaly but what does it matter she killed 67 people okay And, and I'm sorry, you don't know anything about 
the dragon woman that was in ops. What the fuck are you talking about? So she there was, there looks was some, oh, at the rest of you, he, he <laughs> right? Looks, so he he looks he looks to you, Luger, when when Sajad keeps saying this thing about a dragon woman, and he's like, "Do I need to worry about the same shit I had to worry about with Flo with this guy?" I'm sorry, Wix. Her last name is Wix. He'd be calling her Wix. Uh, I'm sort of also puzzled. It's like, D Dragon Woman? Is that something you've come up with on your own? You guys can't, couldn't have been here this long where the hole's already fucking with you. No, no. We no. were up in operations and a what looked like it might have at some point been a woman stumbled out of a rec room and then vented it out of itself out of an airlock and is now on floor G. But I don't know nothing about anybody venting themselves out. So have you yeah. seen any of the weird um like biomechanical tubing in some some of your uh sections of your ship now that look organic but are actually still really metal? Weird yeah. spores. Look, look the exploding boils. I've got a prison riot on my hands. A little bit more concerning than some weird rusty pipes, okay? Well, there's over 100 prisoners on this station, all right? And most of them are still running loose. So, so you know, John like, literally last, you know, don't you see what's happening here? He just completely ignores Sajad. <laughs> like, like his story is more important. And he's like looking now at you, Hedenstrom. He's like, do you know how many guards I have on this station? Probably hmm? like 15. Almost. 12. Hey, it was pretty close. All right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's pretty corporate of them to only put in 15 guards. So, uh, what's the plan? What are you? What are you guys doing here? What? What? Oh. I got synthetics out patrolling, capturing any stragglers we can, trying to get a head count, but plus fucking mess. Yeah, we've noticed. We can, if I can, if I can get my hands on Wix, she's the she's the ringleader. That'll shut this shit down easy. Couldn't we see where she is from operations? Isn't there a way to see where the prisoners are? Not a bad idea. Look, there's... We bunkered down here as best we can, all right? I don't have the manpower to necessarily send people to every section of the station, okay? Sure, sure. Well, if... You have things uh, under control here. I think we might want to check down a floor to, to the deck G. And make sure the fire hasn't spread down there. Or keep it under, get it under control. How are you guys combating the fire, by the way? Well, up until recently, we didn't have a fire to have to combat. So I'll add that to my shit of uh, things to do. Okay. Are there any fire um, extinguishers around here or fire suppression systems we can activate? Uh, he's like, yeah, there's there's extinguishers all over the place. Have at it. <laughs> Great, thanks. You don't know, uh, seem Navarro weirdly would... unconcerned that your jail is on fire <laughs> look uh, Navar Navar if you want to be if you want to be station uh, uh, manager all right or if you want if you want to be warden I'm sure the company would have put you in charge mm -hmm. but I'm in charge so don't tell me how to run my prison all right and I won't tell you how to run your crew now are you gonna help us or not because I think there's a little bit more pressing concerns than doing your little science experiments that you're here for there's nothing more pressing than science experiments, first off. Well, me, uh, our crash <laughs> science experiments are what got us in this fucking mess, Doctor. Is a bit of a pressing matter. I think our interests may align here. Um, like I said, we're supposed to be here, Professor. Yeah, I'd love to help. Uh, we, yeah, it seemed we... fire was at the top of the list, but if you have something maybe we should get to first. Would you be able to help us out in the way of supplies to help you? Give me a manipulation test. Yeah, okay. do it. This will be opposed. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Also, uh, I was going to say before you roll, but it doesn't oh. matter. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody can reduce their stress by one when they see the cat. Oh. 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 <laughs> Come on. Get out of here. That's uh, it's, that that seems fitting. That seems fair. <laughs> little, little cat. <laughs> uh, I won't push. I'll I'll stick with three. <laughs> Bet your ass three. you're not gonna push. Thank you for That's really good, man. Three. Okay. So, uh, as you're discussing this, you guys see that uh, Adrian bolts out of the room and uh, disappears around a hall, and uh, you see that uh, Crash stands back up, puts the treats back in his pocket. And uh, he says, um, Warden, it could be prudent. Uh, they scratch our back, we scratch theirs, so to speak. We know Captain Luger's a capable individual. Um, and they might not look like much, but um, these are some of the best minds in their fields. Uh, sometimes brains over brawn is um, preferable than, uh, well, than brawn over brains, as they say. And, uh... Well, I think we have the bronze side covered with the security forces, so maybe they can be of some assistance. And you see Stikes uh, kind of nods his head a bit. He's like, "Yeah, okay, that's a good. That's a good point." Uh, what did you have in your mind? Uh, what did you have in mind? Uh, he looks kind of looks you up and down. He says, "Doctor." Obviously, uh, doesn't know if you're a doctor or what, but he assumes you are. Uh, uh, Hector would kind of nod a bit and go, "Uh." Professor Navar, um, anything right, to help? Anything to help with uh, corralling? Uh, maybe some self-defense, if need be. Because if we're not with your security force here, we're going to need some help other than what we have. He looks to crash, and uh, then he looks back to you guys like, we've got a. Uh... Probably got some extra sun batons that we could uh, we could borrow out. Um, we don't have much in the way of firearms, if that's what you're insinuating. Mm -hmm. Anything better than a shock gun? Let me see here. You had three six. Well, you only got three successes here, Professor. What do you want to use your stunts for? Uh, oh, he only had one. So you have one stunt you can use. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I I had that up. What what is possible for a stunt of? Go to your skills. Click on the. Click on the wrench. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Ah. Uh. Ask him if he's got any uh, coils lying around. Yeah, so uh, maybe more uh, more information. So like uh, maybe something to help combat the the fire or access to um, station systems that could help us uh, locate or kind of uh, maybe keep in touch with them if we're separated. Like patching into comms or something. He says, "Well, it's like I said, there's plenty of uh, extinguishers and things like that all throughout the station. They're easy enough to find. Um, you could try venting sections. Obviously, that'll take care of it. Uh, the easiest is control that stuff from from operations. I mean, everything is mostly controlled from up there, uh, assuming it's powered." Uh, um, I'm sorry, what else did you ask? What was the last thing? Oh, comms. He says, mm -hmm. uh, right, we can get you in on our frequency, right? Crash, and Crash is like, of course. Easy enough. Yeah, I think uh, that that would be all the, all the professor could think of at the moment. Okay. Well, he will give you guys uh, access to the comms, and you guys will be on the same frequency if you need to be, so you can you know, put that into your suits or whatever, and then, uh, assuming there's no interruptions, you guys can contact him back here in his uh, in his station. Uh, and then, 
Yeah, I think they will uh, be able to provide you with stun batons if you so choose. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And we we've left those uh, suits by the airlock, correct? That's up to you. And you can walk around in your suit without the helmet on, or with it on, if you don't want to be exposed to anything. Um, mm. once, to it was de once I was decontaminated, yeah, I definitely would you know, bring it with me. Yeah, Those probably. suits are heavy as fuck. No, I'd have to leave it behind so I could have my shotgun out. Yeah, I'd take mine off. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll follow suit. So, on your character oh. sheet, if you want to leave it behind... Mm -hmm. You can move it to your foot locker, and that will keep it on your character sheet, but it'll take it off, and so you're not actually carrying it anymore. Uh, if you right-click on the pencil icon for each item, it'll bring up a drop-down. You can do add to locker, and then you can do the oh. same thing to take it from the locker. So, yeah, uh, as, as Sajad said, they are heavy, so even if you're not wearing them, they're still pain in the ass to haul around, so... Mm -hmm. Oops. I know, I know we've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of red, red triangles on our character sheets or our character tokens here. So, I'm gonna add the harpoon gun with no harpoon to my footlocker too. Then I'll leave that behind. Okay. Shit. Uh, how do I get it to my footlocker? Right click on the pencil icon. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. cool. There we go. Oh, he's so free and able to move now. <laughs> Okay. So are, are we planning to go fight fires or whatever? Because if not, then yeah, maybe it's okay to leave it behind. Well, he was giving us mixed messages. He said he was taking care of it and that it's... Now it's something he has to do, so... Um, I mean, we probably want to fix it earlier rather than later, right? I'd say. So, I mean, we're here. We might as well try, right? Mm hmm Well, I think if they have it under control here, I'd want to check Deck G. That's the thing. I don't... It has it, a bunch of our MacGuffins on it. He, he kind of gave us, like, some mixed messages there. So it didn't didn't sound like he actually is doing anything about it, so... It's the same uh... Like, maybe it's on the prisoner side, and he's letting it sort itself out so kind of kind of out of character chris would would crash really only take orders from stikes you don't know okay. every android is set up differently you're assuming based on what you know about android since he appears to be like the head security android mm -hmm. and he's like a high-tech android versus a working joe obviously mm -hmm. he's he's much more capable you're assuming that he probably takes orders from the warden based on what you're seeing in this dynamic, but he does seem a little bit more personable, but it could just be because he's an android set up to be that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Typically yeah. they are, unless they're specifically designed to be an asshole, which usually doesn't make sense, so... Um... Yeah. Well, so I think Navarre would kind of... Uh, after talking to Stikes, um, kind of look at uh, Crash and say, um, it might do to send one of yours to assess the fire situation because from what we've seen it's starting to spread from fg and h he looks at you for a moment uh lark you can tell he's like processing or communicating perhaps with uh another android his eyes kind of flutter a bit and then he says it's currently uh fire in the uh, uh what side is it on the uh port side in the cell blocks that has been contained by some of our forces uh navarro would not on the side. well that's good okay thank you for the information of course so we uh yeah, I think then Navarro would kind of turn to the captain and say, it, it does sound like they have it on this floor, so perhaps we should go down to G. Uh, 
and I'm going to put my Evo suit back on so we can spacewalk again. Um, anybody who wants may take a uh, stun baton. They're in the gear weapons melee folder. They will supply those to you if you need be, so you can have one of those. Mind if I do. Uh, oh, yeah. Prof's got one yep. of them. Taking those. <laughs> um, if anybody wants, optional make a manipulation test uh, in regards to if you can gain any more insider information. Basically do an insight check on Stikes, because you're getting mixed signals. Would that be manipulation forte. or observation? Probably... Let me check the skills here. My job is bashing skulls and saying crazy shit. I would say either one, because I would say empathy or wits would both be attributes, I think, that could help you determine this from somebody. So whichever okay. you prefer. Can I use my breakthrough skill then to uh, automatically succeed on an observation roll? Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. You can. Just count, does it just count as one success? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I assume so that I don't get any of the cool fucking you won't get any stunts. stunts. Hmm. Yeah, stunts here will help, obviously. You can get more information. Okay, then yeah, I'll, try to, I'll try, to, try to get some stunts in there. Okay. Try to flex on a kid, you know. Oh, cool, just fuck me. Hmm. <laughs> wow, a bunch of you guys are down to no stress. Must be nice. How do you have four and everybody else has, like, zero? I, I oh, don't I know. Four. I have four. I have, I have okay. three. Okay, yeah, yeah Lark, makes sense. Lark is the android, and I got counseling from Lark to put it down. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. But Hiddenstrom did a armor roll. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, that's because you guys are fucking with your armor. That's why I know I do that all the time. Okay. Understood. Understood. Uh, one success and one stress. So, you know. Okay. No no bad stresses yet so far. Keeping it together. Good. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so we had what? Dr. Lark and Hiddenstrom. And Captain rolled. Anybody else gonna roll or no? Uh, I think uh, Navarre's gonna be okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's optional. I will. I'll. Um, crap, it's too late here. I was gonna say I'll assist, but. Uh, if you want to assist, one of the other players can roll one extra die. That's fine. Yeah. Whoever whoever either rolled or is going to roll can oh. have an extra d6. We use it. No. No. Look at me. What are we yeah, I'm good. Hello. Looks like Lark and Loisia have one success. Heaton's drum's got one. And I guess Burger, yeah, still does. You don't freak Do out. Do we need to find a couch panic. so we can counsel you? Yes, please. <laughs> We'll, we'll go to one of the people. detention centers. <laughs> Ooh. Point on the doll where all the stress is, and I'm just going to point at my heart. It's right there. <laughs> really not Be real. Good, Doc. <laughs> right. Those protein meals they keep feeding us on the ship are just not good for my health. Uh, did oh. Chris freeze? Yes, he did. Okay. Oh, he's got a WTF in the chat. Big he's lost in space. Bro. Oh, no. And there it is, folks. The abrupt end to our episode. Again, my apologies. Uh, we haven't had any real technical difficulties in a long time here on the channel, so I guess it's bound to happen every now and then so but that's all right uh like i said you know we only had about 30 minutes left so we will be back next week with all the same good alien horror action and we will pick right back up where we got abruptly cut off from so thanks again for listening and we will see you same time same place nighty night